when I talked about activating the parasympathetic nervous system and the physiologic benefit, which relates to these cognitive networks, part of it does uh, uh, in some ways relate to controlling your mind. And uh, one thing that's extremely popular is uh, mindfulness types of practices. But what this really tells you is that within each of us, we have this incredible power which so often we give to others outside of ourselves. And I'm sure you've lived through the experience of uh, you have this idea to do something or something you're just excited about, and then you share it with friends or relatives. And they go, you can't do that. That's impossible. And, and it's horrible, right, because you're so excited and anxious these people tell you these things. And as a result, many people just give up because they believe it. And the mind doesn't know the difference between truth an untruth. And if you put in the narrative in your head that it is not possible, that becomes truth. Conversely, if you look at the through the lens of anything is possible, I'm responsible. Now, this isn't to say that, uh, you know, if you have these horrible external circumstances, magically they go away because you say, I'm empowered. But what it does do is it gives you a change in attitude, which actually changes your physiology. And this is why we see, as an example, you look at Wim Hof or some of these Tibetan monks who can control their body temperature or uh, their heart rate or other physiologic responses. Theoretically, these function independent of us. But what it shows you, you have the power within your mind to control these things. And you also have the power, and this is actually, I'm sure you've heard of Epictetus or some of the Stoic philosophers, External circumstances, oftentimes you cannot control. Right. What you can control is how you respond. And in some ways, that's the nature of happiness too. You know, there are people who have very challenging circumstances and you meet them and they're joyful and happy. And you go, what? <laughs> how is that even possible? Right. Then you meet other people who have everything in the world and are absolutely miserable. Well, what's the difference? The difference is the choice inside their head. And so in terms of manifesting, there are multiple aspects of this. The first one is what so many people don't appreciate is we are battered by information from our sensory organs that are overwhelming. Now, 99.99% go to maintaining uh, homeostasis of our bodily functions. And this is about 10 million bits of information a second. But on a conscious level, we have control, if you want to use that term, of about 50 to 100 bits. So how do you take on a conscious level that information you want to embed in your subconscious to have it manifest? Now, what I would also say, there's a process called value tagging. And in some ways, that's exactly what we're talking about. We are creating something of value that is meaningful to us. And now how do we embed it? So there are these cognitive brain networks, and one uh, which was mentioned briefly is a default mode network. And this is when our mind wonders. It's self-reverential. Uh, and, but also, you think about potential tasks or events you want. But the key is getting access to your salience network and your attention network. And what happens is, is that when you value tag something, you make it salient to you, okay? And once it becomes salient, your subconscious then acts as a bloodhound to be attuned to events in your surroundings that potentially can help you manifest. But it also, again, is very much related to the attention network because that's what gives the fine focus to things, okay? As an example, I'm sure you've been at a party or some event where there's a lot of noise, but if you hear your name, Right. You suddenly Cuts turn. Above. Right. And why is that? Because on a, a deep level, your name or identity is always with you and you're always attuned to that. And so this is the same with the power of manifestation. As an example, there's a project I'm working on, and I was at a coffee shop a few weeks ago, and it was very noisy. But suddenly I heard these two individuals talking about the exact same thing that I was interested in. And of course, I turned to that, and then I went over and introduced myself and connected with these individuals. But the point is that was embedded. So like a bloodhound, 
the uh, Salience Network was looking around saying, you know, how can we make this happen or I make this happen? And then once it reaches that level, then, of course, your executive control network, which is the to-do side of the house, if you will, and it gives you access to memory, prior experiences, et cetera, then that goes to work to actually have it manifest. So it's not to say having a selfish desire uh, gets blocked in all levels of manifestation. It's to say that the highest likelihood of you manifesting, though, if it is focused on the other. And the other good thing about that is, though, you realize oftentimes what you believe you want to happen isn't in your best interest, or you change how you look at the world when you're of service to others, and many times the things you thought you wanted are not what you actually need. Mm -hmm. 